Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. We're back with another interview. And today I have Noah, who was on Love Island season two. So first, I just want to thank you for coming up here and being with us and taking this interview. Um, I know my subscribers are excited. I know I'm excited. So just first and foremost, thank you for coming up here. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I feel honored. Oh, thank you. So first and foremost, I just want to know, like, in Love Island, how did you feel about your time there, like, in the villa? It was very short-lived, because one time we saw you, and we're like, hey, especially when you, like, uh, broke the news, which we're going to get to, but, you know, but then next minute, it was like, where's he at? We want to see him more. You just broke the news for us. Like, come on, where's our friend at? Hey, I mean... It is crazy. Um, it felt like a lot longer than just the three days I was on there. Mm -hmm. But my time there, um, it felt great. It was the best uh, experience I've ever had in three days. Having the cameras in my face, having uh, the people around me just watching, uh, being able to just be my crazy self after being in quarantine for like seven weeks. Uh, it was the best feeling ever. I would go back and do it all over again. Um, but I mean, it was great and it was also not so great. Um, in some ways, uh, majority of the people were very welcoming and very nice and lots of pretty people um, everywhere. Uh, it was just, you know, a great experience in that way. And then, you know, there was obviously some little bit of hostile environment um, we could feel because we came on the end of the, um, uh, what was it? Oh, shit. I just totally like my brain. Well, like, uh, at the end of the, what, like, the last two weeks? Um, well, what was it? The, the getaway. Oh, so oh, we, so, time. yeah, I'll go back and redo that. So it was a little bit of a hostile environment for the sole fact that we were coming on the end of Casa Amor. Mm -hmm. And so nobody knew what was going on. We showed up in their bedroom, and they all just wake up to us at 6.30 in the morning, and uh, they just total put back. Um, and we just kind of owned it. And so there was a little hostility from that. But overall, everyone was very welcoming. It's very nice. Um, it was short lived, like I said, but um, one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life. And I would do it over again 100%. So that's what's up. Now, like when you came in, since you guys were so much farther in, in the end, like, did you feel like you had a fair chance? I don't think it's a hard question. I don't think that we really had a fair chance as far as with the selection of people that were there. Um, it was kind of, there's one person to be completely honest, that was open to meeting new people. It seemed like an open to having a relationship. And that was Kirsten mm. um, at the time. Um, Moira, nice, 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 beautiful girl. Right. Um, just there's something like not there, maybe not, you know, hundred percent. Just, I mean, she's on an emotional roller coaster as it was. And so for her to put herself back out there after everything that kind of happened from the beginning in the middle, um, I just didn't really see anything there and open. Um, everyone else is basically locked up, it seemed like. Um, really weren't open to meeting other people um, and was very vocal about it as well. Um, There's also a lot of drama going on. So a lot of people were more focused on that. So right. um, yeah, that's kind of where it was. And it was just kind of Kirsten at the time that was available. And I tried, and um, yeah. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't. I also was taken off the show, yeah. um, and I wasn't voted off. Um, I, I feel like if I was still on the show and not taken off, uh, I definitely could have stayed on the show, um, just because there was a lot of things that, conversations that were happening that you do not know about and did not see. Um, and I was trying pretty hard, so, but you don't get to see that uh because of the obvious but yeah now like were you excited to tell Sully what was going on because that was one of the highlights of the season and especially of the episode when we were like is somebody gonna tell Sully about Casa Amor it's too many people around for her not so, to know so when you yeah, came and dropped yeah. the ball, everybody was like finally yeah for real though I okay so that 100% was not planned by any means. I was literally just sitting in the dressing room uh, waiting to actually go have another interview uh, mm -hmm. with production. Mm -hmm. And 
she just came in. Um, I think I had said hi to her one time. Mm -hmm. uh, she came up to me and basically wanted my opinion, my unbiased opinion on their relationship. And it's, it's funny because I had a very strong opinion about their relationship going into this. Right. Um, and I just, I so she asked me and I decided to just basically tell her um, my side of the story. And basically I put myself in Johnny's shoes and if I was Johnny, how I would have treated her after the things that I told her um, prior to Casa more. So just to kind of highlight on some of that conversation, things that you may have not heard. Um, I told her basically, if I was your man, um, which I very well and easily could have been, if I was there from the very beginning, um, just because she's just a great person and right. she's beautiful and our personalities are very similar, but um, there's just a lot going on in time, so I didn't try. But so first I told her that if I was your man and I would have told you that um, you're the only person that I would want to look at and if there's anyone else that ever walks in here, my head's not going to turn. I'm not going to do anything, um, especially after Lauren came in. Um, and if, I would have told her that, and then I went to Casa Amor. I would not have even tried to talk to other girls or kiss other girls or put the covers over us while we're kissing. Um, so I told her, I said, that's just fishy. I'm a guy, and I know what guys want. And, and if I would have told you that again, I would I would not have even done that. Um, if, if it was as serious as it was told to you, um, then why did he do that? Like, I wouldn't have done it. And so I just don't think that's right. Um, and then I also said... I told her that Johnny at first was very, um, you know, not as aggressive going at her um, as it seems. And then as one conversation led to another, he seemed to just kind of like slowly, you know, break down and start kissing her more, becoming a lot more touchy feely, even in the challenges. Um, you know, I said he did kiss her during a challenge, but what was, again, taking things too far was after a challenge, landed on her, grinding on her, touching her in places that are just not for normal kissing. Um, it's very apparent that it was it was more than just flirting. Um, and so I told her that was another reason. And then also the third reason I told her um, that things, I just didn't feel right and I felt uneasy for her is because um, yes, they did kiss in challenges. Yes, they did kiss in a conversation. Yes, they did kiss mm -hmm. after challenges. Um, but why, when everyone's seen you kiss all day long, um, in and out everywhere, why do you have to pull the covers over to kiss at nighttime? Mm. What's so secret? Why do you have to cover up that kissing? Everyone's already seen that. You're by everybody. And so why do we have to pull the covers over? So I told her this as well. If it was me and I'm under the covers with the beautiful Mercedes and we're making out and the covers come over, um, I'm not just going to be kissing her. My hands are going to wander um you know that's you know that's just is what it is I'm just gonna tell you right here and there I mean you put yourself in the moment two beautiful people um sexual attention's high it's just gonna happen and I said you know that I know that um and if he doesn't and if Johnny doesn't want to disclose to you what specifically happened under the covers does that does that not tell you um a tell tale of what happened mm -hmm. because why can't what's the big deal about telling you what specifically happened if he tells you what specifically happens and that makes you upset, whether it was just kissing or touching or other things, um, then that's a problem. But it's also a problem that he can't tell you those things. So um, if he can't tell you that and if he loves you enough um, and wants this to work, he should be able to tell you literally every single detail. Mm. Um, it's not like you're going back in your life and you're talking about, you know, all the people you've been with or who you've kissed or who you've dated. This is something that's happening now and something that you lied about. And so I just don't see why you need the need why you have to have the need to put the covers over if you're just kissing and also why can't you just tell the girl that you quote unquote love what specifically happened because to her if you can read her love language it is obviously words of affirmation and so you need to be able to affirm to her everything that happened and that, and that's that's not just insecurity that's just making her feel loved mm -hmm. um and that's the responsibility as a man too to make a girl feel secure so boom and yeah I had Johnny was also very, very worried. Um, but a lot of his attitude was basically thinking that it's all like, what's wrong with her type of deal? Or why is she being like this? Why all the conversations we were having with ourselves and just everywhere, it's just very, just like, I did nothing wrong. Like, I told her everything. Just and, like, if, if she wants to tell me everything that specifically happened, that's dumb. It's not dumb. 
if it's obviously been lingering for three weeks. Um, and so whatever, um, he wasn't man enough to talk about it, whether he's done it now. Um, I, I commend him on it. Um, and they seem to be happy, right. but it just didn't seem right. And I don't know. He just seemed like kind of a little shady, a little shady. So now with that, like, are there, especially in terms of, like, relationships, the sense, like, you were talking about love and affirmation, so you're aware. You're like, if I'm with somebody, I know what to do. So, um, are, were there any other people in the villa? Because we were able to see a little bit of interest towards Kirsten. You kind of brought that up. We saw interest towards um, Moira. So, were there any other people in the villa that, like, interested you, that you didn't get the opportunity to interact with since it was so short-lived, or also that they didn't even show? Or if you had ideally, like, as you wanted to and had a fresh start, fresh pick, which of the girls would you have gone for? With the girls that were currently there or girls from the season? Um, the girls that were currently there. Um, yeah. Who was currently there and overall. So one at that moment who was there, and then we could go into overall, like, from that season. Okay. So, um, okay, ask the question one more time. Okay. So... We're gonna short, start with the short, sweet, there, short, short, access, short, sweet. All right, the girls who were there that you had full access to, like if they weren't coupled up, and you could really get them how you wanted them, who would be the girls? Um, it would definitely be the girls I would go after that were currently there. If I had a fresh start, and there's no dudes. It would definitely be uh, Stelly and Kirsten. Stelly and Kirsten, cool. Now, overall, from season two. Who would be the choices? We know Kelly. I mean, sorry, we know Sully and we know Kirsten. I put their names together, so, but but yeah. So who else now from the whole lineup? From people who came, left, lingered, Casa more that you might have seen, you know. So my list of the girls that I would want to couple up with from season two, mm-hmm. uh, from top to bottom, mm-hmm. we'll go with the beautiful Mercedes is number one. Um, I definitely was hoping that she was there when I got there. Um, just her electric positivity, her energy, just as uh, she was gorgeous. She just didn't care. She left it all out there. Definitely, definitely, we definitely would have. Um, and then Lauren, I would have gone after Lauren as well because she had kind of the same personality. She didn't care. Um, she's beautiful. She's British which I've never dated a British girl. So I was, that would have been pretty awesome. I definitely would have liked to uh, try that out and to learn more about that. And mm-hmm. so then we will go to Kirsten mm-hmm. after that, just because she's got some of those uh, Southern and Midwest vibes that I have. And she's very, uh, she's, it seems like she's been raised very similar. She's also very beautiful and she's also very upfront. And then we will go with Sally because mm-hmm. Sally is just, She's just silly. She's just so silly, so dorky. Like that's that's honestly my personality. She just walks in the room, everybody smiles, everybody knows who she is. She's also very beautiful and she's sassy. So um definitely, definitely her. And then my fifth would have been Moira because she's she's beautiful, she's in shape, um, she's very laid back, very chill, which I love that. I love just kind of like chilling and vibing and uh, definitely family person, which I'm very into family. And uh, she's very sporty. She likes to surf. So that's cool as well. And just, I mean, she's just really nice. And so, you know, oh. those are my top five. That's nice. That was sweet. Everybody had their individual reasons. I like that. Um, now, like, how did your family feel about you going on the show? Like, you're looking for love, and now everybody's watching. Aunties, yes, and my, yeah. Cousins, everybody. My family was very supportive. They know that I want to be in entertainment for a long time. And so they saw this as a great opportunity for me. Uh, obviously, they're nervous for me, but they're they're 100% of the way. They just, I mean, everything for me happened very fast. So I was contacted in the middle of July for the show. Uh, I was given two and a half, three weeks from the start of the process to the end. And so everything was just very fast. And so everything for them was also very fast. So it wasn't really a whole lot of time to be stressed out, but during the small time that there was, uh, it was a lot of stress and there was a lot of just, you know, just being like, you know, whatever happens, happens. It is what it is. And, you know, we're here to support you, Noah, and we just want you to be able to put out the best representation of who you are and to be able to start your career. So that's what's up. That's good. The family support. Now, with 
are you so you're on season two but you're familiar with season one right oh ish yeah, here and there. No, 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 I don't know names. I don't know names. Don't ask me names. But you, you might, you know some faces. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can give you some faces. Okay, faces. Then I'll connect the names with the faces, personalities. All right. So, which yes. girl from season one would you have coupled up with? Seeing like all our cast and stuff. If you've seen all of the seasons or all the shows, or who you've seen. Oh man, I honestly can't remember right now. I'd have to look at picture. Is there a picture of like the cast somewhere? Yeah, I think it's on Google. Google, let me Google it. Will I, will I stay on here? I don't know. But even so, I mean, you could look at it. I don't know. It's cool. Go All ahead. Right, I'm, I'm still on. Yeah, you're still, yeah, you're still on here. I can still hear you. All right, let's see. I don't want season one. So you found them? Yes, I did. Okay. I did find them. Okay, so who from season one or who's the girl from season one? Okay, so I would have to go with Alexandra My and yourself. Thank you. I think you two are the most real people. I think you're both very naturally beautiful and both down to earth. Um, I do remember watching parts of both of you. And so um, from what I've seen, uh, we'd be able to vibe the best and um i'm all for having someone that can just have a good time by not having to do a whole lot i have to have a lot of flash just be goofy laugh um yeah so that's what's up thank you thank you see the quality you see the quality. okay okay you see the qualities <laughs> um so i want to go into and switch into things we were seeing on twitter that came out um involving you and adult film work so um I want to know if you want to talk about that situation a little bit. Is it true? Is it is it not? Yeah, so I will definitely talk about it. Um, everything that's on the internet right. is on there uh, forever, and is a lot of it's true. A lot, so a lot of it is not true. Um, sorry to make sure the door was shut. I thought there was a ghost. It's spooky season over here. You never know. Uh, but yeah, so the, what you hear online, I have been in adult um, pornography. Um, I have done videos. Um, I did two shoots total. Mm -hmm. um, in those two shoots, I did videos. Um, it happened this year, beginning of the year. Um, I did one in February, and then I did one in April. Okay. And um, it's something that I'm not proud of, mm -hmm. as far as something that I like. I want out there for me because. Um, what Noah wants for his life and what Noah wants to show the world is not that. Um, a lot of people do do that and they decide that that's their industry. It's just not me. Um, it's not what I want people to know me as. Um, but I did two types of pornography. I did um, straight and I did gay for pay. Oh. Um, and I am straight. Okay. Um, I'm not bisexual, I'm not gay, but I did uh, some videos with men uh, for a gay porn site um, and it's called gay for pay. And it does not make you gay. It's just called gay for pay because that's what you're doing. Right. Um, and I had did some scenes with a couple women. And after doing it, realized that it's not what I want to be doing. I got into it um, not solely uh, wanting to go into that. I wanted to do modeling. I wanted to do underwear modeling, fitness modeling. And the manager at the time that I had, um, it started out in a six-month process to get me to say yes to this um started out with underwear i didn't get anything and then after two months it turned into nothing and after three months he said uh, hey man like i don't know what's going on so you know what you can sell your nude photos kind of like a like a still shots people will buy that because you're a beautiful person you're in shape and i said yes for some reason because i wasn't getting anything and at this time in my life i felt very i'm like nothing was going anywhere um and I, there's a lot of things that i had tried and i just felt like a, like a failure at this point so i'm just going to grasp on anything that i could and so that didn't happen for three months. And then four months goes by and nothing. And then on the fifth month, um, he brings it to me, well, man, I don't know why no one's doing anything for you, but uh, you know, there's a lot of pornography. And I said, no. And after lots of talking about it and making me feel comfortable because other celebrities do it, other actors do it to be able to you know, pay bills, to yeah. be able to get by and meet people in the industry, I said, yes. And then on um, month six, it happened. Um, I did the shoots. I decided this is nothing that I want to do with my life. No disrespect to the porn, in porn industry because um, right. it's legit work. It is acting 100%. Those people have talent. Um, and again, it's hard work. But it's just not 
an entertainment realm that I can just see myself in. It's not what I was born to do. Yeah. Um, and so what you see is true. I'm not ashamed. I'm not proud, but I'm not ashamed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what the, the hardest thing of all of it was the fact that my parents knew um, before I even knew. And that's why I was taking off the show is because I did not tell CBS that I was in pornography. Mm -hmm. um, when I signed the papers, I, t I told them that, yes, I had not done any um, TV or acting or really any like, modeling that I knew of. Um, that's because I, I believed that, um, but just didn't think of the pornography. And I'd forgotten about it because it was something that I was so ashamed of mm -hmm. um, at the time. Block it out. And I blocked out like PTSD. I've been to a lot of therapists and they told me a lot of the events that were going up to me being in pornography um, helped me lock that away. Um, and I, I do share that story of the, a lot of the events that made me choose those things. Um, I'm going to do it on my YouTube yeah. and on my Instagram. Um, and you, I will definitely want you guys to be able to go watch that as well. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep it short for you here. But there's a lot more stuff that went into that that I would love to, for you to be able to uh, see. Right. And so um, the hardest thing with my family, because people would send my mother um, videos and the pictures of me. Wow. That's uh, um, like, that's and really that's rough. Yeah. That, that's rough, that's even if it is an industry that I wanted to be in. But right. it's something I don't want to be known as. And how does that make you feel? Right. And especially when you're on a TV show in front of 100 millions of people and you think that what you're doing is going to propel you into uh, the person that you want to be. And then when you get torn down like that, and then you hear that your parents were receiving the media that you had been on and they are seeing that and your family, everyone knows, your, your friends. And now friends don't talk to you. Yeah. Now, I've had two people reach out to me as far as real friends. I, mean, I know a lot of people. And so it's been really rough um, because you think you know people and it's just, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. And, um, friends and family, you know, like sending it around to your parents. Or was it like family? Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I, I have people that I've known that, um, release a lot of other things online talking bad about me, the people that know my family. Um, and it's wrong. It's wrong in any sense. If I was gay, if I wasn't gay, if I was, per, if I was currently wanting to be a, a pornography star or if not, it's just not right. You just don't do that to another human being. Right. Um, and to another human being's parents right. um it's just right you, you should support them and no matter what happens and it's not your life plain and simple and so um yeah i want to say this too that um people that are in pornography and that are acting into it or the models into it uh, i respect you you guys are great people and what you're doing is so hard and it is underlooked and people do not realize what all goes into it people do not realize the emotional drain it does have on a lot of people and I also want to say that if you are on the teeter-totter of wanting to do it or not doing it if you're just wanting to do it for money I mean, it's not necessarily the best option mm -hmm. to do because you are putting your entire body out there and it's not just something that just goes away and so it is there forever and uh if you want to do it I commend you I support you and there's nothing wrong with those people. There's nothing wrong with it, with that industry. It is entertainment. Um, and it's just something that I just, it's not me. And it's not what I want to be known by. So um, I'm glad it happens to me. I have, I'm glad I got kicked off the show um, for the sole fact that I get to speak out about this and a lot of other things that are in my story that I would love to share with you. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that is that side. Wow. That was you know what? And I think also a lesson to, or not even a lesson, but something for people to take with them um, is like, you, n even when things get hard, you never know when your break is. So truly, hold on, because it's, it's interesting you're saying like in five months span that that happened, but would you have known that in the seventh month that your opportunity was right there? So it's one of those things even though it might end in a, in a way where you're like, ah, it's one of those forever. You'll remember that. Yo, that break, you ever see the picture of the diamonds or the memes where they're like showing somebody hitting diamonds and then the person gets tired and they walk away. But yep. literally, luckily, your diamonds still came because you got, was able to walk into, you know, into the opportunity for the violence. But I'm just saying, like, literally in those moments where you're just like, yo, 
because a lot of times as people, we tend to make decisions out of fear, out of scarcity, out of things, you know what I mean? When you're just not even right. really feeling like your best self. And that's something that affects everybody, whether it be your situation or be in other forms of situations like that. So I think for all the subscribers out there, all the viewers out there, even a message to myself, just to remember to you, you're, you never know. You could be moments away. So to continue to just push through, hustle, and what's for you is for you. It's not going to leave. And even in that situation, what was for you was for you. The opportunity still came. You know what I'm saying? It might have ended the way you wanted it to, but it came. No one could stop what's for you. It's true. So it's true. Alone was doing work, if y'all don't know. Don't ask me how I know, but if you don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> what's for you is for you. And he's Sylvester Stallone. How do how you don't know who he is? That's what I'm saying. So, Italian, Italian. Literally. So it's just like, <laughs> honestly, everybody out there, continue to just go after what you want and to understand even in hardships, what's for you is for you. So don't give up because it could be right around the corner for you. <laughs> And thank you for sharing. So that. true. I mean, and even, yeah, it's so true. I mean, and I, there's a lot more, uh, again, like I said, to the story. Um, right. You know, I mean, I can add a couple of things really quick. Okay. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, I can tell you too. Okay. So a um, couple of reasons why I think, I think this is just so important. And I feel like somebody needs to hear this on this channel or Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Um, so leading up to me being or choosing to be in pornography and the reason why I felt like I would, it was my only choice at the time and I needed money and I needed to just, you know, start my entertainment career. Um, so uh, June of 2019, um, I was out and I had been um, out drinking with some, with a buddy that I just met um, like two nights later. And I had been roofied and I woke up the next morning and I had been raped. Um, uh, nothing like that, uh, has ever happened to me. Right. Um, and so that was a starting point of a starting point down a down a dark, dark place for Noah. Um, and I tried to take care of the situation with the police and it went to no avail. Um, I was treated very poorly and I was treated like I was just like another person. Uh, not just like another person, just like an object and like I didn't matter. And so um, next month, uh, I got DWI because uh, I got hit by a drunk driver headed home from the bar and I actually saved the other person. But I just happened to be over just the legal limit. Mm. Um, so it was <laughs> going down a darker hole. Yeah. Um, and then I got this manager for the acting and the, the guy who got me into pornography um, and prior to that, there was another guy taking pictures of me one day for a photo shoot, and he sexually molested me um, on on shoot. And I wasn't intoxicated, and I wasn't roofied, but I felt like I had to let this man do what he had to do because I needed a break, and I needed, you know, a place in entertainment, and I needed to make, I needed to grind and do whatever. I needed. Um, made me feel gross, made me feel like an object, made me feel like I didn't care, I didn't matter. Mm. Um, everything in my life that I have done up to this point was stupid and nothing and that I'm just wasting my time and I'm 24 years old or 23 and you know, you've done nothing. So um, do the manager and um, I did my first porn shoot, went, went to him, said, no, I don't like this. Um, and then we got drunk um, that night because he took me out to a bar um, and they told me about some other things that he does. He does like a masseuse line. And he said he was going to teach me how to do that. And we were drunk and very, very, very blackout drunk. And before I knew it, um, I had been raped again. Wow. Uh, this is all happening in a, like a seven month time span. Yes. Very dark, very dark. Uh, and this. I don't feel like I am amount to anything. I don't feel like I'm worth it. I don't feel, I feel like I keep putting myself out there and nothing is happening. Now my naked body is online and I've been raped three times. 
Um, and I'm able to share this to you without bawling my eyes out right now because um, I am stronger right now. I'm in a better place and I have shared my story um, with other people. And so I'm becoming stronger every day through this and I've had to seek therapy for it. But um, the reason why I chose pornography was because I felt like I had nowhere else to go. I felt like it was easy money for me and I had not been making money. And I had been just going down a deep, dark path and that I was already an object at this point um, to these men. And so why not be an object and just people can throw money at um, because I do look pretty and you know I do have a nice body. And so I just thought, well, why not? And so I wanted to say this right now in this moment that if you're a man or a woman, but especially a man, um, and if you've had a sexual um, predator approach you, rape you, sexually assault you, you're not alone. You are not less of a man to speak up and to go to the police or to speak up to us um, here. You are not um, an object because you are a beautiful human being. You are a gift from God and you are, have a great purpose in this life and you do not need to um, you know, take shortcuts to get where you want to be. Um, it is definitely worth the wait. Um, for me, this has been all, all these steps that I've taken are part of my long journey to where I need to be. Um, but I definitely try to take some shortcuts and I definitely try to uh, seek attention and to seek out um, what people want in entertainment, which is people to watch them to feel unloved. And you can see what happened with me. Um, I'm on a better path now, but I just don't want anyone else to make that same mistake. I want you to know that you're not alone out there whenever these things happen to you. Um, you're not alone when people approach you to ask for these pictures or these videos of you naked or they get you into this industry because um, it happens on a daily basis to so many people and they feel like they are lost um, after they do these things or after these things happen to them. And that's not true. You're not lost. You have a community. You have me. Um, and um, I just want you guys to know that. And that is basically kind of why I chose to do those things. And again, I'm not ashamed. It is what I, it is what it is. And I, I wear it, I wear it, but I'm out here to bring awareness to that. And yep, that is the big reason why. Wow. Like, thank you. Didn't, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. <sighs> wow. And wow. All I could Nobody say would know. Nobody would know because I hide it so well in my personality as a person is to just push it away. And I'm a, I'm a giver, I'm a pleaser. And I just want everybody to be happy. And that's also why I chose to do those things because I just want to make people happy. And I just want people to be entertained. I want people to feel loved because I've been bullied. I've been, for, I used to be a really big kid. And so I just don't want people to make the feel alone. And I don't want people to feel like they're not important. So, and so for me to entertain people and to make people feel in, included or make people smile is just my way of showing who Noah is and like and so but I've been to take advantage of that and so that no one would know because that's just who I am um so that's why I wanted to share that because it's not just plain and simple <laughs> so that's and that's the thing too I think which is a big part of why I have my um platform I use my YouTube but also with the interviews to get people to know people better is because sometimes as as viewers and as fans people don't even realize like I don't know what it is but the minute your face touch a tv screen you don't become human the yeah it's you, true you meet somebody you wouldn't go well, I don't like that or how dare you? you would never say that to a random person you don't know but the way people automatically at times feel entitled to I to you as a being so I like I, I appreciate the fact that you're even sharing that because I think that also brings awareness to people like, hey, we are people. You we have feelings, we have emotions. Commentary, say what they want to say. But do you understand there's a person behind that? Do you understand that there's a person dealing with stuff, going through stuff, like daily, whether it be an action happening daily or your mind with you daily? You know what I mean? Like you can't yeah. run. No, we can't run from your mind as much as at times people want to. Yep. So and that's what hurts me like, too, because I just, I want people to know, like, that's what, that's the only thing that I'm, I'm dealing with right now, as far as something that is negative, like the only negative thing that I think about the show or not the show, but, or the anxiety I have is just people thinking something else of me when it's not that, um, which I have to get over that. And you have to get over that as well. 
right. and as a person as well. And so that's something I am working through and I want people to know my story. So I am sharing it finally yeah. and I am finally doing that. So yes, I, I, I appreciate you interviewing me for this because I love to, to, to just share my story because I just love helping people. So, And I appreciate you even sharing that with me, sharing that on my channel. Like there's, we're not even done and there's so much to take away from this. I think this would be an interview. I've had some great interviews, but I think this is by far my favorite interview um, because I'm truly learning in the process of this interview. I'm learning about you, but I'm also learning. I'm learning about life. I'm learning about people. I'm learning about strength. You know what I mean? Um, and, and lessons, I think, also to take into my life with things currently, you know, in my life. So, like, right. just thank you so much for sharing. I know it's touching me, but I know for a fact it's going to touch a lot of people watching this as well. And that makes me so happy. Like, that's, I, I can explain. And I, when I tell people that all they want to do is make people happy and entertain and just make people feel involved and like there's somebody it, people laugh and they think oh that's just it's a cliche or what's whatever you're right. that's not true no it's honestly like i could do that my entire life and not get paid mm. um it's something i enjoy and it's something that i really want to do and if somebody paid me to do that i would happily do it i would happily could whatever i'm doing travel the world speak entertain be in anything and you know it just makes me happy to know that you know it, you've taken something away and that other people are as well um that's, that's all i want now moving forward from that topic which i'm just here like wow like you just you just preach real quick like thank you i but, spilt the tea more than once yes yeah, but this this wasn't even tea this yeah. was, this was like medicine yeah. that was med. it wasn't tea don't downplay that that was medicine that's a, 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 telling your story that'd be able to help other people along the way that was medicine it wasn't tea you spill a little tea a little medicine but the medicine with the bottle it's, with that, the good it's that good geek <laughs> so like now coming out of that experience and um like what has your dating experience been like before um like love island and like has it it has that experience limited your dating in, in terms of potentially the work or just even like kind of so like, you know, when you're like, like, just dramatically like does it how did it affect your dating so before i did the uh pornography um or the adult entertainment mm -hmm. um it didn't, I, I mean, my dating life, I dated up for five years uh, in the end of 2018. Um, I, we broke up. And so I've honestly not dated anybody since then. Mm. I've taken girls on dates, right. um, one date, um, but I'm very picky and I just don't want to waste anybody's time. Um, and I just feel like it's not right. And so, I mean, it's not affected the way I talk to women. It's not affect like prior because I just was picky. And then I'm also the same afterwards, but I will say um, now going up to women that I do know, mm. I just kind of casual, maybe at the gym or just in my area. Um, I I've been ghosted a lot more. I've been um, kind of pushed aside. Mm. Um, it doesn't feel good because I'm, I'm definitely at a point where I would want to date somebody and I would like to be serious. Um, I just feel like I've matured and I've found myself and I love myself. And it's just, it has, it has affected it um, right now currently um, just because it's such a bomb to everybody. Nobody mm -hmm. thought of these things of me. And so I don't know if it's just a time of getting over it, um, but I have had a couple of conversations with a couple of cool girls um but again it just goes a couple conversations it's nothing like i've asked them to go on dates but they won't mm. um it's been pretty flirty up to that point and so i do feel like people don't want norm the average person does not want to date someone that's been in pornography mm. um and i respect all of people's you know types and what they want in a person because it's it, i mean that's just who they are i mean like why would you would you want to force that on someone and make them unhappy no 
So I don't want to be with someone that would feel uncomfortable, but it definitely has affected. Um, Has it made me, you know, sad or unmotivated to go talk to other girls? No, it's just frustrating in the moment (laughs) because I know that the right person is out there for me. And I know that, um, you know, again, it would just be wasting my time, but uh, there's definitely effect. Right. Now, like, speaking of the right person, which I do think there's the right person, and there's going to be some right people out there for you, um, how would you describe your ideal partner? Ooh. Ooh. They might be listening. They might be out there in the, in the things like, hmm. Hey, hey. Like, <laughs> so my yeah. ideal woman or my ideal wife, um, she's definitely, definitely has to have a good sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Um. She has to be structured, but go with the flow, if that kind of makes sense. Like, you know, we kind of have a plan, but we're also like, we're cool with kind of like chilling and like changing things last minute if we have to. Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely not someone that is uh, drama, 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 drama. I'm not into the drama, 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 drama. Uh, (laughs) But um, someone that's fit or that someone doesn't have to be super fit, but they just have to be into their health and they right. need to be, you know, health minded. Um, and someone that obviously puts family first, definitely puts family first, but honestly, it's just some, just, just somebody that is just like carefree, beautiful and knows how to have a good time Yeah, and is, is not afraid to take risks. That that's honestly it. Um, I could go on and on, you know, about, specific things but like you you don't know what that person's gonna look like until you see that person and then you're like right there, there you know the big old it just it just happens it just happens right. so i'm definitely into darker hair girls mm-hmm. um as far as serious relationships mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, uh they just they just i don't know they just they, it's just different um they just, i don't know but blonde girls i'm definitely into as well um, I got some blonde highlights right now. Some people think I'm blonde, but I'm actually brunette. I just got some blonde highlights. Crazy. Um, but I don't know. I, I think the hair thing is crazy thing to talk about, but definitely brunettes. I can see myself marrying a brunette one day. Anna Hathaway. Mm. If you're still single. Well, she's not single. She's, she's married as a kid. But yeah, I, know, I think she's a kid. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. But yeah. That's what's up. Well, ladies, you hear that? Especially the brunette. But I said brunette. Burnett, Burnett, out Burnett? that's a nasty alcohol. <laughs> What'd you call that? If you there, if you ready, he's looking and he's thinking straight. He he knows about love language and all that. He ain't out here trying to waste nobody's time. So No, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. He's not out here trying to waste nobody's time. So you like you've gotten to, like you seem very introspective and and that first off, that is a great thing. Um, so you're very introspective and stuff like that. So really, we put representative aside, like, cause you know, when you meet people, to people tend to present their representatives. So yeah. You as who you are, describe yourself. Oof. I would say that I'm a very loud individual. I'm, so I am a loud, charismatic. Empathetic nerd. Mm. I say nerd because I love Star Wars. Like it, it, it's not just like I'm a casual fan of Star Wars. Like <laughs> if you follow my Instagram, I have like 20 different like graphic tees. I'm not okay. I'm in Florida right now, and on my on, over there is two Star Wars book novels. Oh. Not like, not like. They're regular Star Wars books. These are novels about other stories in Star Wars. But like, I, I, I listen to a Star Wars podcast. Oh, it's a little much, but uh, that's why I say nerd. So if you like Star Wars and you got brown hair, if you have blonde hair, I don't care. If you like Star Wars and you're and you like fitness, slide, slide. It's sold. It's a done deal, y'all. It's a done deal. Fun fact: I okay. That's uh, I've never seen a full Star Wars movie. I think I've seen clips, really never in my life. That's okay. That's I've never right. Seen Scarface either. Well, would you be open to watching them? Yes. Well, 
I said yes. Uh, I said yes. I thought about it too. Like, hmm. it's yeah, one of those. Uh, they're like, good. If it's the, cause all, it's just you know some things are so long. You're like yo, but I let me. I can't say no because I remember I had for a long time I never saw a Harry Potter movie, and then I came across one on a right. family, and I was like, you know what, this is pretty good, and I ended up watching a lot of the. You know they do the back to back day shows. Yeah. I was end up sitting down watching it. Can I remember all of it? Nope. But I do nope. remember that I enjoyed it. I did it's I all really nice. enjoyed it. Well, if you ever want to watch Star Wars, I'll I'll I will watch them over and over again. So we can do like a zoom or something like that. I will definitely watch Good. them. Good. And I'll explain them. I'll explain them whenever yeah, you have questions. Like, I won't be I'll, I won't be that person like, hey, be quiet. <laughs> I'll be like, so who's who the who? I know. Yeah. I don't know. Which one? Which one's Baby Yoda? Yeah, like I see a Yoda. I see a little. Looks like a little. Oh, that <laughs> came out. Today. Mandalorian came out, and Baby Yoda's on the Mandalorian. So. Oh, I just knew the big Yoda. He looked like a little wrinkle booger in a in a blanket. <laughs> I was like, wow, Yoda. I have a Baby Yoda shirt here, but. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Graphic tees. Got one on right now. Rolling Stones. Um. So. More to you, like who or what is the most important thing to you? Most important thing to me, um, man, there's so many things. There's so many things. All right, talk um, about it. So I get it. you definitely have to be just like trust, one hundred percent trust, and that, and I want to and explain that is like trust in that person regardless of the situation. So someone's going to have to be able to trust me one day. Um, they're going to have to be able to trust the relationship's going to last because of what I've done. Mm. Um, and also they're on TV. I'm going to be in entertainment. Like I'm going to be around beautiful people all the time. And so that's that was something in our, my past relationship we struggle with was just trust and being secure because security comes from the trust. And if you can't trust someone, that means you're not secure in a relationship. So mm. um that's huge for me. And I, I need to have that for someone else as well, even though my girlfriend and my wife's going to be so hot, everyone's going to look. And it's okay because she's just amazing. <laughs> but yeah. That's manifesting. You're manifesting the situation right now. So it's going to happen. Yes. Um, and what, what would you say is your life philosophy? Lord have mercy. Um, I don't know. My life philosophy is just, I'm always the underdog mm. and anything. I was underdog in this season of Love Island. I came in, nobody really knew who I was. They're like, eh, just some new guy, it's just some pretty guy. Also, I had a goatee, which was nasty. I apologize. Um, but I came in and I made a the big goatee. old splash. <laughs> the goatee, you were better without the goatee. I yeah, like, I, know. I know. I know. It was so dumb. I took, I took my pictures with my goatee and I wasn't thinking. And then they're like, you have to go in how you took pictures. And I was like, yeah. No. no. And I'm like, you look better without the goatee. The goatee. Oh, it's okay. I, I I totally do look better without the goatee. And I'm but I've always been. I'm kind of goatees, but you look way better without the goatee. I'm actually it's a okay. goatee, but. It's okay. Yeah, you can goatee, just... No goatee. No goatee. No goatee. Um, but I've always been the underdog. I, I was underdog when I was growing up because I was bigger. And so I had to prove everybody wrong. I lost a lot of weight, lost 100 pounds. I was underdog on the show. I've been an underdog everywhere I go. I just kind of, that's me. So I'm always, my mantra is basically just to be like the work, the hardest working person in the room when I walk in there. I may not have to be the most talented. I may not have to be the best looking, um, but I'm going to outwork every single person in that room. I will do whatever it takes um, to be number one. Mm. And may not be number one, but I'm going to work like I'm going to be number one. Right. So I'm always just the hardest working person in the room. Mm. Okay. So we're going to get into more fun questions. Is like, if you could have it being all day or all night, what would you do? Oh, man. Oh, man. Shoot. I think I would want... Hmm all day yeah. wait okay so there's all okay, what is what's included in all day like, like what's the hours i mean you wake up 
it's sun shining outside. You go into bed, it's sun shining outside. You take a nap, it's still sun shining outside. Yeah. Have your cloudy days, have your rainy days, but it's still always a day. It's always bright. Okay, I would rather have the sun because you tan, and then you can get blackout curtains, so you'd be Gucci. Good point. Good point. Uh, and then you're always—I mean, when the sun's out, you're happier. When this, when this, when this dark outside, you become more lazy and lackadaisical. So I definitely want to have it sunny all the time and day at time. Yeah, yeah, I would say all day too. Because then, guess what? If you're gonna wear cool clothes, no one's gonna be able to see them. That's got facts. that cool car. No one's gonna be able to see it. It's a dark. That's facts. And sometimes I get creeped out at night. <laughs> I can't stay in a creepy state. Like I'm, just, my anxiety is gonna be up on the roof. Like, yo. True, and everyone, everyone's wearing these masks. It looks like the purge. Right, I, it just wouldn't be right. So all day. Um. So what are three things about you that we wouldn't get? <laughs> well, the obvious. <laughs> uh, see, I think it's funny that I can joke about this now. Mm-hmm. Um. But okay, three things that somebody would not know about me yeah, uh, would yeah, definitely activities be activities or things like that. I'm a pastor's kid really yeah yeah i got two that are crazy so pastor's kid all my life my dad's a pastor and i'm a homeschooler i was a homeschooler i was one of those kids and um those go hand in hand to be completely honest it's crazy if you're a pastor's kid more than not you're homeschooled i'm not a pk kid i'm a um or a pk yeah pk yeah but i um my great-grandfather's a bishop Oh, okay. Everybody in my family, basically, like, each notch down, like, they're involved in the church. I grew up, like, in the church. Now, luckily, like, my grandma was not a pastor, but she grew up, like, she was in the church because her father yeah. is a bishop. Um, And my mom isn't involved. Well, she's, obviously, she's involved in the church, but she's not anything particularly, so I was able to slowly get my freedom. <laughs> um, But hey. I feel like I, I'm like, dag, a PK, like, I was adjacent to the whole situation, but I'm like, that, 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 and, and wait, you're from the South? I'm from St. Louis, so I'm, from, I'm right in the middle of the United States. Ooh, so like Midwest? I also wasn't good at geography, so just to let you know. What? In case I'm off. But I was like, Midwest? Yeah, it's the Midwest. Ooh, that's, that's PK. Dang. That's PK, baby. <laughs> No, I, we're, I'm, I'm, my family's Jamaican, so it was a little, but I'm like, a uh, Midwest PK? Oh, gosh. Oh, hey, hold on. Literally, dag. Okay, cool. That, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, and um, third, um, I was supposed to be on Broadway when I was 18. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. I was actually supposed to go to New York Film Academy in New York and, and um, study there. And then go on to um, Broadway and start being into shows. But I didn't do it at the time because I was madly in love with my five-year relationship. (laughs) Crazy. I wish I had a drink. That's a drink. You know what? (laughs) Like I told you, what's for you is for you. So first off, Let's just say that could have been direction. You know, like you're on a highway, get off on this one. Like yeah, this was the exit, <laughs> but you just found it. So then you keep driving, and you know what? Maybe oh. the island was the second exit. So next, you might have another exit coming. If it's for you, it's gonna happen. On top of that, if you're 23, that because I'm 22, and sometimes I feel like in life people make it seem like if you ain't get like on early enough. Or, like, young teens is done. No. Like, oh, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, people make it seem like our time's running out. Like, we're just getting started. 23, you're just getting started. So It's true. It's true. I'm 24 now. Oh, 24? 24, again. You're still. You're mad young, literally. You're just getting started. This is true. And no one no one would know that I can sing, but... You can sing? I thought I was supposed to be on Broadway. Good point. <laughs> I was like, wait no, a minute. I could be a backup dancer. Huh? No, I could be a backup dancer in the back. Wow. You're going to have singing videos on your YouTube, right? Maybe. I don't have any yet, but. You should. Maybe. You never know. 
you'll see you guys. He'll have some debut singing videos, unless you want to give us a little note right now. But he'll have some singing videos on his YouTube because you're you're gonna get discovered. You're gonna be a star. So you're gonna have nah. to get singing videos out. People say I look like a young Leonardo DiCaprio and a young Johnny Depp had a baby. Mm. I got kind of that. Kind of that. Yeah. Okay. Would you call it? So, and then, so that's the three. So you have PK, Homeschool, Broadway. I mean, there's more things, but. That's, that's, that is, those are three. Yeah, man. That's, that's a hard three things about me you wouldn't guess. It's wow. true. You wouldn't guess. I wouldn't have. Um, so uh, you're in the gym. On your page, we see that you work out a lot. I don't know. Your page got a lot of workout videos. Yeah, I, do. I work out every day. I'm going to go work out after this. So, Bell. So, um, what would you say is your go-to routine? So, I so my split is I do uh, each body part on different days. So, I do I have chest day, a back day, a leg day, a shoulder day, arm day, and then I'll do an accessory day uh, where I do like forearms, calves. Mm -hmm. I might do some, but I'm also doing um in between every two days i'm doing legs so i'll do two days and then legs and then two days and then legs so like i'll do like a chest and then i'll do arms and then legs and then i'll do back shoulders legs and then i'll do accessory chest legs like it, it's like that in my i do a lot of cardio after every time i work out so i stay lean i don't eat a lot of gluten because gluten is really bad for you people don't eat gluten mm. uh you know, it's and everything um, a lot of people can't even process gluten because um it's just it works but yeah um now if you could only pick one legs arm chest abs day like and you could only stick with one thing so you're gonna have one thing that's on swole like, mm. if you could what would shoulders you shoulders i love working out my shoulders because when you work out your shoulders for some reason for me i get my shoulder pump i get a back pump upper back pump my biceps are pumped and my chest is pumped and my triceps are pumped. I don't know what's going on, but it's just, it happens. It happens. And also like whenever you work out your, your delts, makes your arms look bigger. Um, and so your shoulders are like a, a huge point of like what people first see on your body. And so if you can work those out, get those looking good, the rest of you looks a lot better. So. Good. Well, I'll keep that in mind. I didn't know that the shoulders was that important. They are. Well, I mean, you got your traps up here because if you work out your traps, then you got your, your rear delts, which are actually part of your back, mm -hmm. and you have your front delts, and you got your side delts. And ladies, if you want to raise your chest up without having to pay for some extra job, uh, just do some upper chest press and military press. It will lift your ladies up. Now, does it, but it doesn't grow the ladies. No, it does not grow the ladies. Okay. It's, it makes them go from this to this. They stand at attention. Okay. A little better. So instead of paying for a lift, you can just get a lift yourself. Okay. This is, well, that's not good for me to know, but good for <laughs> that lady. For those who can, go do it. <laughs> Save some money and go do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, but you're beautiful the way you are. You don't need to. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm cool with this. I'm, I'm cool with it. Um, so before we go, Normally, I'm really good at this game, but I have a feeling I'm probably going to lose. Um, I won my last round in my last interview. This interview, I'm probably going to lose, but let me not put that in the air. Oh, but come on. Truths and a lie. Oh, my gonna be a tricky one. Oh, Lord. So give me two truths and a lie, but I think you're going to be tricky. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh man, this is gonna be rough. Two shoes and a lot. Okay, so we'll go with oh, this gonna be good. <laughs> I'm searching. I'm oh. searching hard. I'm searching hard. Oh, okay. I'm I'm I am i can not forget this. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Two shoes.
Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so two truths and a lie, right? I'm ready. Okay, so I partied at Coachella. Um, this was 2018, mm -hmm. or no? When was the last Coachella? Was it 2019? Yeah, 2019. The last, the last one. R.I.P. Coachella. Um, last 2019 Coachella. I partied with Logan Paul and Jake Paul, not with them, but I was in the same party with them, house party, um, after party, after Coachella, which also Ariana, Ariana Grande's um, boyfriend at the time was there as well, a bunch of excellent Lakers and all that you know, jazz. Um, I drove across the country with my best friend and our brakes, went out from Florida to LA, literally went out going 80 miles an hour. Um, and my brother has been. Uh, threatened by the Mexican mafia. These are some good ones. And I wish two of them were lies, but one of them isn't. <laughs> Damn, the mafia. Hmm. But I feel like that's such a good truth. But, okay. Is your brother still alive? I can ask that question. He's a lot. Oh, he's nineteen. This happened. This happened when he was like four or five. Who would threaten a five-year-old? But again, it is the mafia. And you've always lived in 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 the Midwest. Or it, it, it's Mexican, so it's cartel. Oh, cartel. You've always. Now, ma ma mafia is more like, you know, uh, like Chicago, uh, Italian stuff like that. Okay, so I'm trying to make sense of it all. All right. I could see you being at a party with like a lot of different people there, especially if you're in that type of entertainment field. Um, it's very detailed, too. So I'm like, hmm. I don't know. I'm an actor. Pretty detailed guy. So good point. But then you said the, the brakes 80 miles per hour. So then how the car stop? Uh, and this was on the highway. Yeah, I was driving on the highway. I was going down um, in Tennessee, and I, I was a brand new car, and I had brakes had failed, and a sensor had like broken on my brakes. And when I took it in, they're like, "We don't know what's wrong." I had to use the emergency brake just to get off the highway, and I coasted down um, the exit ramp to the dealership. It's Tennessee. I don't know Tennessee, but I would assume in Tennessee you could get away with eighty miles per hour on a long highway because it's Tennessee. Um, so I'm going to assume that that did, um, but I do, for some reason, I don't know. I feel like the five-year-old with the cartel, um, you know what? I do think the cartel thing happened. I think there might be a long story behind it, but the cartel, you know, PK. You can't pick them all now. You can't pick them all now. No, I know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk it through. I'm thinking for some reason. Maybe the cartel wanted to push through the church. So I think he probably did threaten your little brother. He was used as collateral. I'm going to say that that's true. He was used as collateral. Tennessee. Censors, though. You know what? I'll believe, I believe it. I believe the sensor thing. Cause I've had, I I was driving, I have a car currently like drive that has sensors. And I remember I wanted to reverse and I got, I knew what I was doing, but I was real close to a car and you could see the reverse camera and the car stopped. Yeah. Like, no. yeah. Even I still kept like pushing for it to go back. So I could see that happening. I think I don't, you, you were in a party at Coachella party, but that was that Beachella. What? Beachella when Beyonce was performing at Coachella? Nope. No, that was 2018. Uh, uh, what's your face? I just talked. Ariana Grande was the main. Okay. And I think what possibly could happen is the truth. All right. I think the lie is the first one about the party. And not. I do think you went to the party. But it's a possibility that who was there you actually met the people that was there. Yeah. 
that's it. That's the lie. The party. The lie is the car. So the truth is, I did go to an after party, and those people were there. Logan Paul, Jake Paul, Iron Grande's boyfriend. They were there for a very short time. Uh, and they left kind of like 30 minutes after I got there. Um, we actually got into the party because I met a guy at a VIP um, Revolve after party. Oh, or party. Revol yeah, Revolve's good. With they their invited me to this. We went. They were there. They left. Um, but they were there. There was other like Laker people there and like DJs and all that cool stuff. We party till like 7 a.m. in the morning. This was insane. I slept for like ever after that. Um, and then, yes, my brother was uh, threatened by the Mexican cartel because – we were on a mission trip and this, oh, <laughs> this, this yeah you're right the, this I was like, like he was collateral they were trying to slow yeah. the church <laughs> <old Mark. laughs> yeah, it's crazy because this kid was like messing with like the girl that he was that he thought he had a crush on which is like i think she's like 15 or 16 and he went up to this he went up to this mexican cartel guy we knew his cartel because we found afterwards um and he had a little swiss army pocket knife he went don't mess with my girl or I'll cut you. Oh, wow. And yeah. And then the guy's like, well, da, 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 like, what are you doing? And then our translator is like, oh, no, he's just kidding. He's silly American. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But my car did not do that on the highway. Um, it actually did it off the highway um, when we were in L.A., not when I was in Nashville, Tennessee, going 80 miles an hour on the road because I would have died. I was thinking that. I was like, he could. How would you survive? But I was thinking Tennessee. Hopefully, not that many cars, so you yeah. can serve around for a while until it dies out. Um, okay, I was close. You're very close. I was very close. So, see, I knew I wasn't gonna win this one, but I knew I was using all my brain power. Okay. Yes. Well. <laughs> That has been our interview. So I want to thank you again for coming up here, for giving us fun stories, especially with this. I did not expect the little cartel. I mean, I didn't hey, expect the story, but I was right. We got crazy stories in this in this household. It's insane. But yeah, and thank you just for sharing your story. Thank you for being open with us and being super transparent. I appreciate it. I know my subscribers appreciate it. And I will hope that my subscribers, if you enjoy his 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 story if you want to know more about him hear more about him i will put your youtube um information in the description box below i will also put his instagram information here so you can follow him on instagram and he'll probably have also the links to all his stuff that he's doing um so yes again thank you for coming up here i appreciate you taking the time out um and again just thank you like i've learned so much i've had a lot of fun um Lots of laughs. And yeah, I think by far this is hands down my favorite interview. So Well, I, I appreciate it. You're my favorite interviewer. I've had I've done lots of interviews, so you are definitely the prettiest and definitely the funniest and definitely the best. So Thank you. I appreciate it. And before I go, I like to do a handshake with my subscribers. So I'm gonna teach it to you and we're gonna do it and all right. So I go talk. Okay. Later. The gun's up. Bye, and then we peace out. Okay, do it again. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Oh, okay, I got you. All right, I got to pop my phone up. Right, I'm gonna pop the phone up and then get it going. All right, ready? There right. you go. Talk, you talk to you to... later. Bye. Oh no, you go this. Yeah, outwards. But you know what? That's another. Outward. Switch them up. All right, ready? You can't see me right here very well. I can't. Huh? You can't really see me that right there, can you? No, we are able to see you. Okay. Ready? All right. Okay. Talk. Talk. To you later. Bye. Oh, I messed up. 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 That get people sometimes. It's boop, 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 boop. Okay. All right. All right. Ready? All right. Here we go. Talk. To you later. Bye. Yeah. Got it. Hey. Right.